It's one of the most enduring stories in human history. The Ark is one of the most iconic things in the whole world. Everybody has heard of Noah's Ark. Archaeologists say writings on an ancient tablet confirm there was a global flood and an ark that carried animals. A recently deciphered 4,000-year-old clay tablet from ancient Mesopotamia reveals striking similarities to the Bible story of Noah. The world currently stands still as a team of archaeologists, unveiling the most interesting discovery of the century in eastern Turkey. After millennia of research, the famous legendary Noah's Ark was found using edge-cutting technology that the world had never seen before. The result of this is a great celebration as the world turns its eyes to the Darupinar Formation, where evidence of Noah was retrieved. Could the Darupinar Formation truly be the ancient Noah's Ark? What have scientists got to say about this discovery, which seems to be changing all we once knew about the world? Let's find out. The story of the journey towards finding Noah's Ark is a long one that did not start today. In the book of Genesis, the Christian Bible reveals the location of the enigmatic Ark, which was said to have preserved humanity when the catastrophic event of the greatest disaster ever known as the Great Flood came upon the earth. During the Great Flood, biblical history holds that all life on earth had perished unless those in the Ark, which Noah had built according to God's instructions. Thus, in Genesis chapter 8 verse 4, the Bible says, And the waters receded continually from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters decreased. Then the Ark rested in the seventh month, the seventeenth day of the month, on the mountains of Ararat. Holding on to this scripture, which reveals the location of the Ark after the Flood. There has been an intense search for the Ark on Mount Ararat. But after millennia of searching for this enigmatic Ark and failing to find evidence of its actual existence, a unique team recently arose, girded with edge-cutting technology, the strongest of drive and unwavering faith. Is arguably the most important archaeological discovery in recent years. That location just happens to be near where Noah and the animals in the ark ended the long journey through the flood. With a united front, they did not hesitate to match towards the icy mountain peaks of Mount Ararat, regardless of the obstacles and difficulties they faced. As for Mount Ararat, it is no easy place but stands as the highest mountain in Turkey reaching a staggering elevation of over 16,500 feet. It's a dormant volcano with a permanently snow-capped peak. It is considered a symbol of Armenia, despite being located in eastern Turkey. The mountain's high altitude, harsh weather conditions, and remote location make it a difficult climb and a challenging area for archaeological exploration. Here, there is also a problem of government restrictions of explorations due to security precautions. However, for years, the courageous team searched the snowy peaks tirelessly, hiking through its rugged terrain and slope which made explorations very difficult. The freezing temperatures, as well as strong winds, were formidable opponents, but they didn't give in. You might be wondering what force drove the team, but wonder no more as we lay bare the answers. The team was marshaled by none other than an archaeologist known as Fethi Ahmet Yuxil of the Department of Geophysical Engineering, Applied Geophysics Department of Istanbul University. Yuxel has long been fascinated by the phenomenon of Noah's Ark and the desire to find it. We cannot say if it was this desire that guided him towards his profession. However, holding on to his childhood fascination with Noah's Ark, we see Yuxel braving the mission many years later to find the Ark. To achieve his long cultivated aim, he gathered himself researchers, archaeological students, expert photographers, as well as other technical experts. Together, they made use of the most advanced tools, including advanced cameras, high-tech mapping equipment, and specially designed ground-penetrating radar arrays. With all these in place, Yuxel led the team fervently, telling them he was sure that if the terrain was meticulously scanned, something incredible would be found. For Yuxel, there was no doubt that the Ark had been preserved on the freezing, windy peak of Mount Ararat, and the team soon got to work, ready to find something worthwhile. After days of research and digging, Grace was finally released, and the team soon arrived at the Durupinar Formation on the Tendurek mountain range. This was no ordinary site, 
but it continues to be one pointed by many to be the final resting place of the Ark that Noah built. According to the region's locals, Noah's Ark lies hidden beneath this formation, stuck in the ice on the mountain's peak, which came to be after the flood. For this claim, there was evidence once Yuxel's team stormed the mount to explore it. As they carried out their survey, researcher Andrew Jones was quick to spot the formation as it was sticking out from the icy elevation. Following this, Jones called Yuxil's attention to the strange sight. Before them was the symmetrical formation, with clear, straight lines that were too distinct to be a natural formation. Yuxil's team was nothing short of amazed by the sight. Large, dark timbers were arranged in a straight line, with their angles coming out of the snowdrift. To further dig into the matter, the team soon deployed their ground-penetrating radar scanner, which did its job while the team watched in amusement. As a result of the scanning, a massive structure was discovered under the snow and volcanic debris of the formation. They claim to be real-life raiders of the Lost Ark. A group of Chinese explorers say they found Noah's famed boat, and Sydney siders will be among the first to see inside. We are like 99.9 percent .9 like um, it is Noah's Ark. However, conclusions were not yet drawn. On measuring what they had in front of them, Jones discovered the size of what had just been found, surprising matched the size of Noah's Ark in the Bible. And that wasn't all, as the structure also revealed separate internal compartments like those of Noah's Ark, and had been constructed with processed lumbar and metal. Joy filled the air, as demonstrated by folding it before Yuxel and the rest of the team. Could it be that they had just found the actual Noah's Ark, which had been built several millennia ago? Has the seemingly impossible just been accomplished? Seeing the gravity of the discovery, Yuxel quickly contacted all he could, ensuring that he would reach out to local Turkish museums and British media outlets. Speaking to the reporters, Yuxel explained that the formation was definitely not natural, but matched the massive compartmentalized ancient wooden marine vessel that was described in the Bible. Thus, he explained that this could be the famous Noah's Ark long sorted for. While the chances that Yuxel might be correct were quite high, the team continued in their research. They took from the organic discovery fragments of timbers and metal components from snow and proceeded for intense laboratory analysis. Unknown to them, the best part was about to come. After the analysis was done, radiocarbon dating revealed the most surprising thing dating the discovered structure to be about 4,800 years old. The possibilities were highly impressive as this matched perfectly with the timeline of the building of Noah's Ark, stated in the Bible. What is meant was that this seemingly discovered ancient shipwreck could have been the one built by Noah himself. Many have been used during the Great Flood, the biblical timeline of which was stipulated between 5000 and 3000 BC. Seeing that this discovery aligned perfectly well with the biblical story of Noah's Ark, to Yuxel, it had become the very first evidence that Noah's Ark truly existed. The implication of this was that an event largely unsupported by scientists was now being validated, and the scientific community was definitely not ready to let that slide. So what is the result of this discovery? And what do scientists have to say about Yuxel's hard claims? Things soon got more complicated when Yuxel and his team decided to go public about their discovery. As the news spread, a heated debate began in its wake. The Christian community, which included Christian scholars, was happy about the discovery, confirming that it reassured their faith and reinforced biblical history. But this was happening at one side of the table. On the other end, skeptics had risen, with the likes of the evolutionary biologist Dr. Williams Denvers saying that merely finding old wood on the mountain proves nothing. It was undeniable that the discovery of Yuxel's team held a lot of promise. However, the world needed more evidence, and Yuxel knew this. In any case, the team remained happy about the find, basking in the possibility that it held for humanity. But there were more discoveries underway. With more explorations carried out on Mount Ararat, numerous ancient artifacts have been recovered from the mount's depths, which further validates Yuxel's recent discovery to be Noah's boat, thereby keeping Yuxel and his team really hopeful. They have therefore decided to keep the location of their finds confidential for the time being, even as they continue to carry out high-tech analysis to unravel more mysteries. 
Unfortunately, the intensity of the debate over the topic has only increased with time. More clashing statements are being made by the scientific community, which remains skeptical about the discovery, and their skepticism is, in turn, met with the arguments of Bible scholars. The result of this is a battle of words between Bible scholars, archaeologists, geologists, historians, and evolutionary scientists. So what are the arguments about? According to experts like Dr. Raymond Jones from Yale Divinity School, the recent one is worth rejoicing over as it could be archaeological proof that key scripture stories are true. He explained this to CNN, stating that if carbon dating ties the discovery to the flood's timeline, it validates the historical accuracy of the Bible. Also supporting Jones's statement are a multitude of Christian churches that make use of this discovery as a reference point to stir up their faith in biblical tales. For example, Pastor Frank, who leads a small-town church in Oklahoma, praised the recent discovery, stating that the fact that we could now see and touch God's covenant with Noah vindicates our unwavering faith in Holy Scriptures. Following the discovery, God Evidence Archaeology also steps into the matter by funding and sending more Christian exploration teams to the Mount to find more evidence. However, while all this went on, the skeptics also did not hold back. Geologist and Professor Martin Stokes, the head of the UC Berkeley Archaeology Department, was among those who spoke, stating that the planet's landscape doesn't reflect the possibility of a worldwide flood like the one described in the Bible. Hence, there still needs to be evidence of the Great Flood, even though the old structure was found, and it doesn't change the laid-down chronology of human civilization derived through intense research over the years. However, scientists are just one of many people doubting the authenticity of this finding. In recent times, other religious people have come up to express their doubts about Yuxel's findings, with some accusing him of pure fabrication, either for publicity or money, instead of drawing conclusions based on scientific analysis. According to a Turkish imam, it is foolishness to keep searching the mount and ignore the holy site where the ark landed according to the holy prophet. Following this, he added that the finding failed to sway their faithful, who knew the real location of the ark. On the other side of the argument, some evolutionary scientists had their opinions. In this category, Dr. Melanie Chang tweeted that one anomalous wooden structure does not invalidate evolutionary science or migration records built for millennia of fossils and DNA. As the pressure to know the truth increased, that argument exploded further on social media with evidence flying. However, the argument could have been more constructive, as no one was ready to listen to the other. Fueling the arguments even more, a geology professor questioned how they could date the wood that old even while using the latest technology. In response to this, Bible scholars argued that the skeptics were just scared that this find would tear down the theory of evolution. The response from scientists was a demand for an independent peer review of methodology from Yuxel and his team. At the same time, the community of believers protested that the truth should not be suppressed. A way forward was needed, but what was it? Ultimately, Yuxel agreed to take a group of well-respected neutral evaluators to the site of the discovery. This group was tasked with the responsibility of assessing the Ark without bias in order to give an honest report. Amongst those selected for the job was a figurative historian known as Dr. Alice Un, and though she is known to be a believer, she finds herself in a career that focuses on establishing authentic timelines of people of old. While she is well aware of the tasks placed before her, she remains undeterred. She boldly stated that she had prayed to see God's wonder revealed in her time. As for the fragments of the acclaimed Ark, they are still undergoing analysis, keeping all curious. While some believe that there is not enough evidence to prove Yuxel's finding as false, others believe that something this big demands a careful analysis before a conclusion is drawn. So. What has scientific analysis proven so far concerning Yuxel's findings? Would the Amazon discovery on Mount Ararat survive the in-depth scrutiny it is now undergoing? To consider the answer, let us discuss how radiocarbon dating shut out the skeptics and left the world convinced on the matter. How did scientists get convinced by radiocarbon dating, and what are the implications of the flood's timeline? 
The recent discovery of Yuxel and his team, if verified as true, has proven to hold the potential to rewrite history. However, scientists who monitor the situation still require rigorous verifications to be made on the matter. Yuxil and his team are already taking the necessary steps to get this verification. Here, the first verification started when Yuxil took fragments of wooden beams and other organic materials from the site to a certified laboratory for research under a confidentiality agreement. The goal was to reveal the structure's genuine age through precise measurements of residual carbon-24 isotopes, yielding results of higher accuracy than previously attainable. The eagerly awaited lab results, unveiled after a week, astonished everyone, as the carbon decay signature in the organic sample indicated an age of around 4,800 years for the wood and other materials. As for the weathered timber used for the structure, it was dated back to 2 to 800 BC, allowing for numerous generations of error margins. Here, Yuxil makes clear the implications of this result, speaking in a televised interview, by saying that the timbers not only predate the oldest structures, but also match the timeline of the Great Flood. Thus, there was no arguing the fact that the wreckage was built during the days of Noah, and possibly by Noah himself. Biblical scholars were undoubtedly thrilled by this discovery. Dr. William Jennings, an Old Testament professor, remarked that if the dating is precise, it aligns the structure's origin precisely with the time frame of the Genesis flood narrative. To further find answers, theologians are now returning to scriptures to re-examine Genesis's story of Noah's Ark, considering the materials and details of the Ark building in order to compare it with lab results now accepted. The discovery for them proves with scientific backing that biblical history records might not be a metaphor. Because when sediment layers of the site were carbon dated, it was shockingly revealed that Gobekli Tepe is more than 12,000 years old. Thus, the Theological Society, which had initially revoked Yuxel's membership for his delving into studies of the evolution theory, now praises him. According to them, he had brought honor to them before God. Because of this, preachers are becoming more confident that their teachings are true events backed up by science. However, some scientists still disagree with dating methodology and the conclusions derived. In this category, we find the lead geologist who dismissed the first discovery of the Durupinar formation by Ron Wyatt, still stating that he needs more evidence samples that show a lack of contamination. Ron Wyatt, said to be an amateur archaeologist, discovered the site in 1960 but had been labeled fraudulent. In this line, the lead geologist who opposed him argue again against Yuxel that establishing an accurate carbon decay curve for such an ancient find is more of art than science. He therefore demands a review of the analysis process for perceived gaps. In the community of skeptics, some accept the carbon dating accuracy of Yuxel's discovery but interpret what it means differently. A good example of such people is the anthropologists who wrote in the Times magazine that the discovery of an old wooden structure doesn't prove that it is Noah's Ark and that it also doesn't confirm the epic tale of a worldwide flood. These experts likely hold these views because of their ardent belief in the gradual evolution of the world from the Stone Age toward the development we see today. Thus, the argument continued. But while the pressure increased, Yuxel's team ensured to assume a neutral position with the lead archaeologist after an accusation of religious motivation, declaring that their team did not make any claims on the meaning of this discovery. However, they noticed anomalies in the formation and therefore sought to investigate them by applying the best practices. While Jones makes this clear to silent skeptics, he nevertheless reveals to chaplains that the fact that the structure's dating aligned with the flood's chronology was surprising for them. And here, we have the calibrated carbon dating to thank for doing the impossible. Moreover, even after the structure's dating was established, more problems still arose. This time, it hovered around the discovery's location, which Yuxel and his team chose to keep undisclosed. The curiosity of the world over the formation remains undeniable, since Yuxel and his team made the discovery. Thus, the desire to know the site's location continues to grow. However, Yuxel withholds this information, believing that numerous people visiting the site to investigate might damage the find. So what conclusions do we draw about the truth? 
Why does an old wooden structure found in Mount Ararat generate so much debate? Well, the book of Genesis explicitly mentions Ararat as the final resting place of the colossal boat of Noah. Opposing experts in biblical chronology and geography continue to find ways to debunk Yuxel's argument that what he found on Ararat proves anything. For this, they have come up with various analyses. One of them is that the Bible did not explicitly mention Mount Ararat as the exact location of the Ark, but rather mentioned the mountains of Ararat. This statement, according to them, covers the ancient Urartu region, which comprises many peaks. Thus, they argue against the certainty that the discovery of old woods on Mount Ararat gives to the religious community. Now, nobody really believes they'll ever find an ark. I mean, for obvious reasons, wood, decay, etc. According to a skeptic scholar of religious history, Prof. Dr. Isaiah, in an article, the Bible descriptions of the mountains of Ararat likely meant that the vessels may have rested on varying slopes 100 miles away from the modern Mount Ararat. But as an answer to this, academia argues that where else in the region Ararat would the ark land if it were not at its highest peak? The arguments about Mount Ararat continued, and private individuals were not left out of the curiosity game, with some trying to find out the truth for themselves in the most dangerous ways. These sadly led to some unfortunate incidents, and an example of this is the story of Brock Lancaster. Lancaster was a curious, wealthy explorer who spent a lot of money on numerous climbing attempts in order to discover the truth for himself. On his last attempt, however, he disappeared midway into his exploration, only to be found later in his abandoned gear with human remains. The incident stirred up fear about Ararat. However, Yuxel's team held their ground on wavering about their decision not to reveal the true location of the Ark. As a consolation, Yuxel promised to provide the location of the discovery when the time was appropriate. He explained that in the meantime, that could not be done as more scientific studies are still needed before the risk of exposure and contamination. Additionally, as long as debates continue about the authenticity of the find, the location is best to stay confidential. Besides, the issue of doubt surrounding the story of Noah's Ark has yet to start today. Interestingly, the story is rather one that has created a long line of belief and doubt between scientists and the three Abrahamic religions. For now, let us delve into the story of the Ark to understand all that is involved. First, when we talk about the story of Noah's Ark, three religions come to mind. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. However, the Ark's story is also one that concerns the world's history, as it is said to involve a great flood that shook the whole world, wiping out almost all warm-blooded life from Earth. The story is first mentioned in Genesis, a chapter that exposes human wickedness, which increased on the earth and displeased God. Here, there was a mass violation of ethical conduct codes. Hence, God decided to cleanse the earth of its wickedness. But then, he found Noah, who was righteous before his sight. He, therefore, shared his plan to destroy the earth and start again with Noah. Following this, he instructed Noah to build a big boat that could contain his family and two of every animal in the world, male and female. Noah, in line with God's instructions, built the ark. It was a three-level wooden boat that was about 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Equivalent to modern standards, the ark was 437 feet long, 73 feet wide, and 44 feet high. This was no doubt an ocean-worthy vessel surprisingly built during the Stone Age, long before the days of ancient Egyptian civilization. It was designed to have rolls of room with other animals at the bottom, while humans stayed in the middle, leaving birds to occupy the top. The ark was sealed inside out with pitch to make it waterproof. Also, there was an 18-inch opening around the top perimeter of the deck. It was a tough project to complete, but Noah trusted in God to help to get it done. With the help of his wife, sons, and their wives, materials were assembled, and it took up to 75 to 100 years to get the Ark built. The energy and time wasted on the seemingly meaningless Ark stirred up mockery from all until God declared it time to enter the Ark. After seven days of staying in the Ark, the rain began. Water poured down from heaven in torrents. An underground reservoir burst open, and the catastrophe began, lasting 40 days. 
Everything was soon covered with water. The land was consumed by water, making it a big sea with nothing surviving apart from those in the ark. It took five months before the storm was over and the water receded. The Bible says that the ark landed on the mountains of Ararat. The story ended with Noah's family coming out of the ark and multiplying on the earth again. In Islam, Noah is said to be the second Adam and lived 350 years more after the flood. His name is mentioned in more than 100 verses in the Quran, but is known as Nu. The Quran narrative of Nu follows the biblical line with little variations, such as Nu and his family staying in the ark for six months, and Nu interceding for humanity until he was sure there was no remedy. While all Abrahamic faiths talked about the legacy of Noah and his legendary ark, scientists still ask questions about the logistics of the ark, like cargo tons, waste removal and space needs at the time, and how possible it was to create the ark in the first place, which was about four football fields in length using ancient tools. There were other questions on how the wild animals kept from stampeding in close proximity for months. And while answers were demanded, the Bible informs us that God's hands were involved all the way, making all things possible. Apart from biblical answers, some scientists like the nautical enthused Tim Lovett have also arisen in recent times to provide answers. Lovett analyzed the possibility of Noah's Ark using biblical details alongside advanced digital modeling. According to him, the Ark could have been built to be watertight using a sleeker design. He explained this in his essay, Could Noah's Ark Float? Here, he states that stability could have been achieved as a result of the keel, which was also used in medieval ships involving a heavy mass of stone or iron. This would have ensured balance in the Ark despite the cargo weight. But what about other questions like ventilation and sanitation? Imagining animals in narrow rows or boxes certainly raises these questions about how feasible the Ark was. However, a creationist author known as Henry Morris brought answers in the 1970s. Here, he suggested that for operational logistics, Noah and his family reflected the nautical chain of command still used today. Thus, while Noah performed leadership roles like accessing conditions and ensuring supplies were available, his wife and her daughters-in-law took care of sanitation, and his sons handled repairs. As for maneuvering their course, the size of the ark was one that only allowed for a slow maneuver by pushing, heaving, or steering oars around the exterior. As for provisions for the animals, Morris insinuated the operation of the shepherd structure, where Noah and his family hunted for big catches assisted by a proto-dog. The small animals here were said to feed on gathered grains. Another theory of sustenance involved a possible supernatural hibernation of all the animals. There was also a suggestion that God supernaturally preserved the inhabitants of the Ark. After all is said and done, the technicalities around the Ark's operations remain debated, but we must not forget the significant lesson of faith and obedience that the story of Noah teaches. Even as Yuxel's findings remain debated, Choosing to agree on whether the story is true or not remains a choice. We've come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. What do you think of Yuxel's discovery? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.